Oh, yes. And just like that, we've gone live. I should really actually get a new picture for my background, actually. If I do that now. Personalize. Let's do this. Let's change my background real quick. Choose your picture. Doom, 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 doom. Hello, people. I am Jesse. I mean, Jester. I did not just reveal my true name. I'm sorry, I'm just fighting with my cat here. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. I hope everybody's having a super duper good day. I realized I was tired and I didn't want to be tired, so I decided I was going to wake myself up. Let's use... Let's use that as my new background. Boom. I like it. That's weird because I've had the Zelda background for a very long time. Anyhow, let's just let's just totally dive right into this. Hello everybody, I'm Jester and welcome to the channel Jester's 3D Tabletop Gaming where I bring you 3D printing and tabletop gaming stuff. Uh, today, I, you know what, I figured I, I was getting exhausted. I was just, I was... I was ready to just lay down and call the night, and you know what? I said I didn't want to. I said I got to do something for the channel, and it's been a long while since I've done one of these, and it's just the, the good old exploration of the 3D printable files for for tabletop gaming. So you know what? I, I loaded up some uh, some Kickstarters. Hey, careful, Blue. I got projects going on over there. <laughs> so loaded up some that we can check out. I don't know if anybody's going to join us. This stream was just completely impromptu, just spur of the moment, fired her up, and uh, let's just see what happens. Okay, you know what? I'm going to rabble for a few more moments here to myself. Just see if anybody shows up. I can always cut this out later on when that... Uh, Later on during the editing process, the pre-editing. Give it a minute, see see if anybody gets a notification. I don't I don't know who who follows me. I got blue hair. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Nice blue hair. Mmm. Which will be good. Give me a chance to sip up on this uh, the sweet, sweet coffee. Get myself nice and caffeinated. So I can uh I can do this all nice and good. Looks like the audio is working good. That's always a nice, good bonus. Um, awesome possum. Just give it another minute here. Just see if anybody comes along. Lonely. I'm so lonely. I have nobody to call my own. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I can't even jump into my own chat through OBS. Well, that's silly. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Keep it cool. Don't think anybody's going to be joining me. Like I said, not a big deal. I'll solo this adventure. Actually, I think I like it through this a little bit better anyway. All right. All right, let's do this. Let's check out the first one. The first one we've got today, let's see how that looks. If that pops up nicely nice. Also see if I can move my, ah, my microphone just a touch. There we go. Awesome. All right, so we've got ourselves some, uh, some high quality fantasy buildings for your tabletop gaming needs. The City of Furwood, 3D printables. Very nice. I, th I think this looks rather fantastic. Uh, they're doing really good so far. I mean, they only needed 3,000 and they're up to 60,000. So that's pretty darn good if I, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, right off the bat, I gotta say, really like these buildings, but I just, I love this style of buildings. Uh, cast and play is very similar to these buildings and I, I, I like them, I like them a lot. So they did the 3D printable fantasy props. Which, uh, you know what, let's just take a quick dive over there and see how that did. If that has... Yeah, they, this, this did, this did really good. 
So they've already ran themselves a fantastic uh, looking Kickstarter by the, the looks of it there. Some nice treasure chests, all of that fun stuff. So now they're proceeding on to creating some buildings. A bunch of stretch goals as per usual. The core set, this is what we all want to see. So we've got ourselves a nice small little cottage. Actually, that's that's really cute. Love the blue roof, obviously, because of like blue hair. Blue, I really like blue right now. Um, the alchemist shop. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Brew up some nice potions going on, on inside there. Uh, and that's just what I love is like having all of these buildings, like just to be able to have like a little hut that you can throw on your table that you're going to use for, for whatever, even if you're not going to use it for your games, just to have it, like, it, especially if it's painted. <laughs> uh, we don't even need to talk about all of the non-painted things that I have. Ooh, a medium house. Really love the angled roofs. Like it just, like the interior of this building, I got to say, would actually be really fantastic. Uh, the wizard tower. Wizard towers are always a win in my opinion. Pretty much like the vast majority of all of my video game playing days I've always chosen a wizard or a sorcerer or something like that. So it's actually just recently that I've gone outside my comfort zone and I've, I've tried playing other things but yeah wizard towers to me is it's where it's at. So very very nice designs here. Oh weapon shop! I love the fact that there's just a, uh, a skull up there. That's fantastic. It's a beautiful, cute little detail. The, the render on this, well, not even the render, the, the illustration on this is very nicely done. And the mansion. Oh, ooh, nice bay window. Bay windows for the win. Just gonna, just gonna throw it out there. Bay windows are amazing. And this section would get so much nice, beautiful light. If only these were real. All right, now we've got ourselves this sweet little... Uh, renders here going on that's that's just a fantastic building spinning a little bit fast that's okay <laughs> okay nice renders but of course we all know that renders can be tricky how will it look in fdm oh good they give us a nice good demonstration they did actually a really good job printing that that's that's nice and clean nice and i mean that really the majority of the layer lines that i could see are just down towards the bottom but the roof covers it up really nicely uh, 0.16 there you go that makes sense that makes sense hey what's up how's it going thank you for joining me all of those object items right right kind of random didn't expect to be doing a stream I'm just like you know what I need to wake myself up and I need to do something for the channel and I haven't done one of these for a while so that's the plan uh, more Kickstarter should do with 3D uh, spinning renders, but slower. Yes, definitely slower. I would agree to that. So once again, building looks fantastic. And the 0.16, I mean, oh, that is a crisp looking building. I, I usually print mine at 0.2, and that's just a speed thing. But on the grand scheme of things, I'm usually just not even here in the first place. So I don't know why, you know, the extra eight hours is really going to make that much of a difference. Approximately eight. I like the fact that the interiors are available to, to have as a play option. So that is always nice. <laughs> Except for me, it's just like, there's an interior. I can hide it with the blackness because I don't need to paint it. <laughs> I, I really like the, the looks of these. Oh, it looks so good with lights. Ah, oh, that makes me happy. I'm just I'm just going to start, I think, branching into the, uh, the LEDs and trying to do lighting effects and, and whatnot because it just it adds something oh so nicely. I uh, painted them for the campaign. Uh, Roy, you did yourself an excellent job. Uh, cool, there, he's got his Instagram on here, so if you wanna go and see some more of his paint, that's probably a, a possibility. They've got the uh, the window slots, if you wanna add yourself the nice, uh, nice windows. Doors that work. Minor, but enjoyable, just just being able to open a door, even if it's just just that little bit, there's just something oddly satisfying about that. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Simulate glass, which I had just previously stated a mere moment ago. A mere moment ago is what it was. Playable interiors. This is just taking forever to load, which makes me wonder about my stream settings. Is it good? It seems good on my side, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, resizing. Perfect. Really like the fact that they included a scale table because I've had some buildings before where I literally I'll load in a model, put him next to the door, and kind of find out where he's where he's sitting at. 
free model. Uh, fantastic, uh, like, battle horn. Um, I think everybody should have one of those inside their regular house. You never know when you're going to need to ring that, right? Uh, and the stretch goals. What do we got for stretch, stretch goals? Some good old scatter props to go with your beautiful buildings. I like it. And as we've previously seen, that they have uh, they, they knock out some pretty sweet scatter terrain. Ooh, the barrels. I gotta say, I like those. They're, I mean, they're just barrels, but you see enough barrels that all look the same. That's something with even just the, the little minute details like that are really nice. A tiny bit glitchy. I hope I'm not too glitchy. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, can I do that here? Mm, it says it's good. I'm going to kind of roll with it for now, but uh, just keep me posted. I don't like to be the glitchy one. Some nice stone walls. Beautiful. Uh, it's crazy how a little stone wall can just really finish off a building. Kind of make a, like a little fenced-in area. All right, where was that? Dun, dun. And Alex, there we go. Back to that. Oh, the gallows. Yeah, it's a place that I never want to be. I don't think I could watch something like that. Voice is clear, image is just jittery, on and off. Okay, it, it's not like terrible though, like game changing. Thanks for coming and joining for my random impromptu stream of Kickstarter exploreriness. <gasps> the witch hut. Okay, yep, that looks cool. And it's unlocked. Did I mention that they've got what? Uh, six days left? Let's let's just double back here real quick. Uh, oh, they have 21 days to go. They still have a long time. And uh, and they are doing just fine. But I mean, with buildings like these, like, ooh -wee, They have some nice looking buildings. Okay, so sorry about that, about that there. So yeah, that's, that's a really cool building. I like that. Um... <laughs> one of the gallows at your house uh all right i would like to live there like included with the crows or the ravens i i we've we have a raven in the front here that we've been trying to make friends with uh the kiddo named him buddy bird and uh, we feed him bread on a regular basis he's been around for like four years now he's pretty sweet Ooh, the trebuchet i've got a little trebuchet and i use it to launch cat treats for my cats that is a beautiful trebuchet and It'd be really cool if they actually made it workable. Does it? Does it come up, please? Uh, do, 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 do. It doesn't mention anything about being workable, but that would be cool. Okay, these buildings are just so nice. I like them. I really like them. Okay, I can do, 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 do. and the bank. Oh, concept art in progress. The generic store. Ooh, the sawmill. That's sweet. I like it. Awesome. So there you go. That that is the um, the city of Furwood. Very nice. Very nice. Oh wait, is this patron stretch goals? Uh, so this is, I think. Okay, this is their Patreon, and I'm assuming these are stretch goals available for their Patreons. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So what are you getting here? Let's let's look at these tiers here. $55 or $85 Canadian is going to get you the core set plus all stretch goals because I can only assume that SG stands for stretch goals with this tier you have access to all city Furwood models. Okay, you know what? $85, that's pretty much on average that I like to see. Um, boo -boo -boo -boo, what do we got going on here? You should make a coin collection treat dispenser for your raven. He'll collect coins for you for your food and you both profit. I like that idea because that raven is just the best and our cats are just the best. We got a new cat. And it's super adorbs. It actually looks like a mini version of of our our one cat Blue. And they're they've been like best friends, which is like really nice. So yes, uh, 131 gets you all in the city of Furwood and the fantasy props, which is pretty sweet. <sighs> cool. The early bird is already gone. Awesome. So that was the city of Furwood. I like it. I really enjoyed that one. So up next, we've got the Click Clack Custodians. Uh, so this is uh, it's from one of our fellow uh, Discordians uh, from Blue, uh, and they're they're just they're super cute. Like they're they're doing fantastic. This is their first Kickstarter. Uh, they needed three thousand, and they're already just about like 
up to 6,000, which is fantastic. At 23 days to go, so they still got a long time. Um, yeah, funded in less than six hours. That was, that was actually kind of exciting to watch. I've got a few of them just down yonder, actually. Give me one second here. Are you looking to escape blue? I'll be doing a video on these guys here coming up pretty soon, but uh, I gotta do a little bit of cleanup on them still, but just a, just a cute little guy. Gotta do a little cleanup on the uh, support removal from the face there, but he just do so cute. So really, really happy with these. I, I enjoyed the uh, the resin that I printed them in. I was having fun playing around with mixing some colors. But if you if you need that hero to be able to pop in and keep your dice safe, then check out that click clack custodian. So anyhow, let's let's get on with this here. This is Orbital Dice. They've got themselves some fantastic dice. Uh, check out their Instagram, um, Orbital Dice, as you see there. Boom. First Kickstarter, which is always exciting and probably a little bit terrifying, I would imagine. So, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, they're just, they're super cute. And you know what, like having something to put your die 20 on is just, it's satisfying. It's just satisfying is what it is, right? Be between the little goblin, the mimic, I love the fact that there's a mimic. That's just the best. And then the uh, the weasel, the snakey snake, the tentacle kitty, and the... This guy is just way too cute for this world. I very much enjoy him. Actually, they're all way too adorable. Right? They're too cute. Uh, I hope Orbital also uh, goes in the direction of some dice altars. Right? Dice altars for the win. Or dice jails and all of that fun stuff. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The, pretty much uh, they wanted to keep it small in terms of their, their, their uh, stretch goals. So they've got themselves the octopus. The dragon. Ooh, the fire elemental. Or just like the fire. I don't know if it's a fire elemental, but it's it's a fire. And the fox, which is just adorable. Look at that guy. Yeah, that one painted up would just be way too cute. And the snakey snake. Uh, yeah, you always need a unicorn to protect your dice and, you know, enhance it with some of that luckness. Let that luck just flow down into the crevices of your dice. The Mimic, you know what, that's that's almost the one that you grab your friend's dice and then place it on his tongue and then you say, just go for it. Uh, the Dire Weasel, that is right, because Dire Weasels are uh, the cuteness. Okay, so, there we go, and then, um, boom, the uh, Dark Elf and Griffin, when they reach that stretch goal, I'm assuming they reached that with the, uh, the Canadian, yep, yeah, there we go. So the Eye Beast, which is just so cute. And the Pegasus, I like him. The Owl Bear is just, don't oh, look at him, he just wants a hug. We could just go and get him a hug. More dice prisons. I completely agree to that. All of the dice prisons. Um, yeah, so I, they, they crushed it. They unlocked all their stretch goals. I, I really like this one. It just, it looks fantastic and it printed up. So yeah, here's some of the, the dice that uh, that they do, and uh, they're always posting new pictures, and they've got like a giant collection of dice available at this point, and they do a really good job. They're they're very beautiful dice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so you can pretty much uh, kind of, I think, get, uh, get them printed and sent to you, get the STL files. I gotta say, for, the, for a first Kickstarter, it's very well put together. I do not suggest hugging an owl bear. I do like the weasel, he'd go well with a character I have. Very cool. Um, always hug the owl bear. Actually, <laughs> tickle tickle everything's belly. That's my answer for anything in any game. She's just like, well, have you tickled its belly? Because that's the way to do it. So yeah, uh, oh, and then here we go. So now we got some nicely painted up. I love the fact that they added this one to a nice little, little field, some nice grass. He's just happy as can be. Just, Chilling around, rolling the dice. Ah, that is delicious coffee. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. So, very good. Um, very good. Cool, cool, cool. So that was the Click Clack Custodians. I've gotta say, they look pretty sweet. 
who really needs arms? Like, like who needs them? Uh, well, I mean, everybody. Everybody needs them. Okay, so coming up next, uh, this is actually the the current progress that or the current project that I'm working on right now. I don't know if you can see that behind me, but I've got them uh, got them printed, got them painted. I realized I don't have enough open lock uh, tiles, so that's currently what's being printed. So anyhow, let's just uh, let's play their video and let's check this out. This is by Digital Taxidermy, by the way. I am rather fond of them. In an underground vault, scientists attempted to develop a new food source. Oh, I missed it. I know, the dragon's my favorite. Some nice, beautiful red birds. Turn that down a bit. Right? I very much love digital text in their game. I still, I still think they're, uh, they're uh, school recycling or school upcycling Kickstarter was just awesome. I need to print some more of that stuff, actually. Yeah, I, I, I think that this Kickstarter, like, all that flashes in my mind is just, like, Warhammer 40k... Uh, kill teams. I, I just like that is instantly what flashes to my mind, and it makes me need to to get my my Warhammer buddies back up and rolling so we can get some some games going. Over 100 files available. I love how it has like that slickness to it. They did a really good job painting. Them. I did not do that good of a job painting the, the set that I'm rocking. Here. More tiles to be added during the campaign. Yes, it definitely has a very much of a flood vibe to it. Speaking of which, the new Halo is right around the corner. Uh, should have already come out. No, let's not talk about the fact that it should have already been out. Oh, that sloshing sound is just... Ugh. So these guys got 17 days left to go. They were looking for an 863 goal. They're just about at 8,000. And... Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm currently printing some right now. I've got a whole bunch of them behind me. I'm very much enjoying them. Uh, they're all support free, which is is very nice. Um, proudly presents. So if you if you haven't checked out Digital Taxidermy and their website yet, can I? Does this take me to their website? This does. Uh, the cool thing is they're they're trying to create like their own little lore and, and history they're they're always coming out with uh with cool little short stories and uh they've, they've got some fantastic uh fantastic files available um like their spool towers are just cool just a great way to uh to make use of all of the empty spools that we already have laying around our households uh so yeah their their website is pretty cool It's just so creepy. I love it. It's a it's a very well done design. Uh, open lock, uh, which is sweet. Uh, the only thing that like I don't like about open lock and and all these dungeon tiles. I'm not a big dungeon tile person myself per se, just because it just uses up so much terrain. I I'm big on using a TV with an image and then placing uh, 3D printed elements on top of it. But uh, I definitely do enjoy having some tiles around the house. Uh, so industrial tile sets, like they're just fantastic. Good little hallways. Uh, they've they've got a whole bunch of different wall designs, so you can kind of change and mix it up. <laughs> Apparently, the Facebook had asked for the the sphincter doors, so there's a whole bunch of these these kind of style of doors now, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh, hey, look at that! I didn't even realize they've got the uh, the themed spool towers, which is pretty cool. That just screams Tyranid right there. Absolutely screams Tyranid. Uh, you got your more industrial section, so you can uh, you can really mix and match this set, kind of make it that corrupt uh, that corrupt takeover. Like like look at this, the way it branches from this infestation, and then leads on into the the overtaken chambers, and then into you know the more industrial section. 
the bottom one rocks. Right? Right? You're talking about the spool tower section, aren't you? That one. Very much so. Uh, this section kind of gives me like that Prometheus vibe to it, like the, the, the very much the classic aliens. Uh, Alright, where were we? The Thing. And that and that's exactly what I love to see. I would have loved this to have been a like a Tyranid or a Gene Stealer Termagant, but uh, yeah, no, I very much enjoy this. Oh, did a good job with the uh, with the paint. They did a great job. The transition, right? Very much so. Uh, yeah, so kind of the, the corruption as you can see. So just different elements that are kind of just consuming the ship. The ooze coming out of there, I love that. Um, it mentioned something too about maybe these are the holes that he had uh, he had mentioned to me about. Uh, but to be able to kind of take uh, leftover pieces of a filament and kind of bend it within those holes to make it look like wires and stuff like that, which is just another kind of I think cool use to uh, to make use of something that you already have lying around, right? Because there's always that extra bit that's stuck that's in the Bowden tube at the end of a roll that you don't really have anything to do with. Um, twitching for more. Are you twitching for more? Proceed with caution, brave adventurer. Um, so yeah, for the new guys, check out their website and the, the spool setup, which is, uh, the, they've got the, the lighting, the LEDs for all of that, which is pretty sweet. Okay. So, under construction, now we're just kind of, okay. Oh, we got ourselves some more. Ooh, the Bio Arch Scatter Terrain piece. I like that. Once again, very Tyranid feeling. I've got a, an army of about 3,000 points of Tyranids. They're my very first army, uh, and I will for now and forever love them. There's the Sphincter Door. Sphincter? I think that's Sphincter Door. I think that's how you say it. Um, and a variety of other doors. I like those. I like that door. I like that door. Oh, the egg chamber room. Very cool. Very cool. Reminds me of the most recent episode of The Mandalorian, which is just fantastic. That is neat. Okay, that's pretty schnifty, actually. I can't say I've, I've seen too many uh, open lock tiles do that, but is that stairs and stilts for raised sections? Yeah, that's that's pretty darn cool. All right, so the potential for things to come would be the computer control room, the scatter pack, the core pledge upgrade, the sentry guns, the rotted and diseased sections, connecting tubes, the reactor chamber, the bioengineered dice tower, the weapon store, the trophy room, the shock troop breaching pod. Uh, the bioengineered dice tower sounds like it screams Tyranids all over again. It's just like, ah, I am gonna, I'm gonna be having some fun taking some photos of my Tyranids in those, actually. <laughs> really excited about that. Uh, cool. I, I hope I'm not scrolling past too much. Like, is this, am I doing this at a, at a comfortable rate, would you find? Out of curiosity? Um... With Yes I Can 3D Filaments EU, they sell quality filament that I've been using for several months. Cool. So, some filament to check out. Open lock, if you haven't figured out what open lock is. Great way to snap together uh, different tiles and, and wall pieces. So, very cool. Uh, digital taxidermy. Uh, fantastic. Got some great stuff. Cool. Thank you. Um, perfect. Okay. So, yeah, definitely something to check out there. Boo, -boo, -boo. up next, what do we got? We've got... Lost Adventures Volume 2 All-in-One 3D Printable Adventures. Uh, this one is from uh, from Danny and his YouTube channel, so let's just check out his video. Turn down the volume here just a little bit. Hey, it's me, Danny the 3D Printing DM. Yep. Last year Danny, I launched the a Kickstarter Lost Adventures Volume 1 that included everything you would need to 3D print for your home D&D games. All in one collection. Heroes, monsters, terrain, written encounters, maps, and get the props. The goal was to give everything to 3D Printing DMs they would need to run D&D and give players a memorable experience. Once you've got a few nice trees, ruins, and huts, like you get in volume one, Perfect you might start wanting something Thanks. new, I appreciate something that. different, a little more unique. Enter the Lost Adventures volume two, now live on Kickstarter. Let me tell you a little bit about it. 
Of course, we brought back the core of the Kickstarter. Memorable characters for the group to meet along the way. Dangerous monsters to wipe the whole smile off your players' faces. IV compatible stat blocks <laughs> or the unique monsters. Just fun to make little part quirky in moments in this. Peasy. Map this tiles and a whole bunch of variants to trailer. make using them in a variety of ways even easier. And versatile scatter terrain that just completes the whole package. We also added some new things some to take this trees. set to the next level and make it even more adaptable for your own games. NPC cards to help DMs run the characters, no matter where they are. Beautiful buildings your players are going to want to hang around. He's great. He pretty around. much he's, he's going to say it all for me. I'm not going to have to say much about that. Uh, to help about you this get one, I can breeze right through it. DM. Nah, and counter hooks good. to give your group a reason to Actually, explore all of the same green thing. State. Just did an episode on on this. I want to be hanging out right here, right? Sulfur Springs. <laughs> yeah, baby. Once you show your players the map and you say where do you want to go, they're going to want to go somewhere. So All right. yeah, I know that was a lot to take in. So that's that's a kind of a quick rundown of that, because um, it's not quite like a like a trailer trailer for his uh, his campaign. It's directly from his YouTube page. I don't know if there's like any drawbacks for for kind of showing other videos on a stream. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't want to cross any boundaries that I'm not able to cross on on this. I like this channel. I don't ever want to lose it or get a strike. Um, so yeah, so anyhow, um, he created the Lost Adventures Volume One. Uh, did really good, uh, kind of like like D and D encounters and three D printable elements. And so yeah, now they're back at it again with a second one. So boom, look at that thing. That that is a majestic piece of of uh, forest terrain right there. Like beautiful. Uh, I printed their uh, oh yeah yeah free sample. Free samples are always nice. Definitely, if it's not something that you want to go and back yourself, you can always go and get a free little uh, turtle druid there, uh, which is just so cute holding up the dragonfly. Really like it. And some nice scatter terrain, because scatter terrain is what it's all about. I, I definitely love my scatter terrain. Uh, beautifully painted. Uh, Dylan Ol Olney? Critical Crafting. Uh, recently discovered his channel. Seems to be pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, actually learned a really good painting technique for how he does these trees, uh, which uh, I'm definitely going to have to try and implement myself. So uh, looking forward to trying and playing around with that. So does a does a great job painting that. Um, so good old core set. You get your yourself. Well, actually, I think he's pretty much unlocked like the vast majority of all of this stuff here at this point. So you're getting yourself trade folk and sages, and you're getting some wardens. And some Edder Caps and Matriarchs. Uh, you're getting yourself the, the Tikal, which I believe are the thing that of which that I can't think of what their name is right now, which is most unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, but yes, those guys, the, the lizard folk. Uh, beautiful models, absolutely fantastic models. Uh, they all come uh, become, uh, pre supported, I believe there is a little blurb. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but uh, by the 3D printed pro. And I just love 3D, uh, I, I love pre-supported stuff. <laughs> to be able to just grab a file, just put it into your, 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 your slicer, and then just be able to put it into your printer and walk away. It's just, it's the bee's knees. It's the bee's knees, Naga. I, I wanna maybe say Naga, but that doesn't also sound appropriately right. I don't know. Possibly, it might be. You know what, now I feel like I just Google, I might have to Google this here momentarily. Uh, some scatter terrain, some nice beautiful logs and fallen over trees, and then some other just some really cool houses, which I just, I gotta say, are fantastic. And they're nice and big, too. Like, I've got, I don't know what you can see behind me to here, but I've got the dragon and the two buildings up there, and, uh, and they printed great. Really enjoy them. One day I'll get around to painting them. One day. One day I'll paint them. The sap and suds in. Have it, has it been a really long day, and are you tired of your, you know, grand adventure? Have you fallen in battle, and you're looking to relax? Well, come on down to the Sap and Suds Inn. The All Inn, where you will unlock everything. Free supported there you go, by Greg Karakaus. Kar Karakaus. <coughs> I believe I said that wrong the first time as well there. Um... So yeah, so anyhow, how this is going to work is there's going to be little NPC cards 
Uh, that's the dragon that I printed and it uses up so much resin, but it's absolutely fantastic. Very cool model. Very, very cool model. Absolutely brilliantly painted right there. Love it. Schlippetaboo, look at that. They have unlocked a boatload of stuff. That is most impressive. Meet the minis, the trade folk. Okay, we kind of seen these at the top there, so let's just cruise past this. Seen these buildings. I, I like that. I like that building a lot. It's very nice. So yeah, so anyhow, uh, a whole bunch of maps. Uh, well, getting to make a video for this Kickstarter, I actually got uh, a couple of the maps to check out and they're, they're really nice maps. And, and like I said, how I roll is I put these images on my TV and then I add stuff on top and, and that's how I do it. So they're, they're just really nice maps. Nice high detail, fantastic. The NPC cards give you like a nice like little flavor, some role playing prompts. Yeah, exactly. So the, some of the personality, what they might be afraid of. So just just a really good way for if you're a DM to be able to, to get something out onto the table and uh, and get a game up and rolling as quick as you can. Somebody did a great job painting all of these. Uh, these would be some of the boss encounters that you can uh, that you can rock and roll with. Printed this guy; he's my favorite. <laughs> I really like that model. Um, yeah, just great paint job, and to be able to to rock these on a resin printer. Uh, so they they say that uh, they they can do these with uh, with FDM as well. So that is always a nice to be able to have the option because not everybody has. A resin printer and not everybody has an FDM printer, so to be able to to have the option to print on either is nice. Uh, although I don't know if the buildings are set up to be printed on uh, on resin. Some fantastic paint jobs, like like Chris Spots. You did good. You did good, kids. You did real good. Oh, Quipper Swarm. I like. I wouldn't want to fight anything in the water because that just sounds terrifying. The good old pre-supports. These guys are sweet. Some good old forest trolls because you just gotta have yourself some forest trolls out there in the wild blue yonder. Some wood elves. To, to definitely go with, you know, the, the wooden tree theme. So, yeah, really great. Oh my, look at those guys. Just, uh, I, wanna, I wanna hug them. I wanna tickle their tummy is what I wanna do. I'm not going to because that's a bad idea. Except, actually, all of my D&D &D characters would probably end up trying to do that because, you know, ridiculous, rash decisions, why not? So, yeah. Uh, different boss encounters. Oh, my goodness, the River Kraken just looks so cool. That's, that's something I would not want to face because that would be absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Okay, so. Okay, that's kind of cool. Nice, 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 nice. A whole lot of people that helped work on the project. Hey, that's my video. That's pretty cool. Okay, that was the critical rafting, crafting that I had previously mentioned. And just some more, uh, yeah, Squigmire miniatures. Fantastic paint jobs. Loving those tentacles. I know, they are just awesome. They are ridiculously fantastic. Uh, <laughs> that is a fantastic thumbnail. Cool. So anyhow, that is that. Um, I think the all-in pledge is, what do we got here? Uh, NPC cards, maps, stat blocks only, core miniatures only for $40, core terrain for $53, uh, core miniatures and mini stretch goals, $72, uh, core terrain stretch goals, all in, uh, looking at $100 Canadian, which is pretty darn good because there's a lot of models there. A lot of really ridiculously fantastic models. Okay, so we are on to the next one. We've got three more to check out here for the little collection of, uh, of Kickstarters that we have put together here for this viewing as of tonight. Boobie doobie bop boo. All right, we got ourselves another little video which I will use as a oh, I'm out of coffee. How does this happen? How does one run out of coffee? Ah. 
Okay, if the video is having a hard time, that makes me slightly worried about my stream. The rural internet. Oh. Oh, okay. Some more sweet buildings. 13 floors of playable game space. Stunning detailed interiors. Oh, I like that. I really like that. 42 rooms and hallways. Standalone or interplayable buildings. Oh, did you see the way that they just made an absolutely massive building by making a bunch of other smaller buildings and turning it into one really big building? A massive keep and modular bridge set. A five-story fortress playable on every level. Three-inch cosplay. Ooh, actually, that's really nice to be able to give you the, uh, room to actually fit different models down. Your stream is fine and beautiful. That floor rocks, right? That floor really rocks. Oh. 110,000 Canadian. The fighting pits? What? If you can have a Colosseum battle of epicness? Alright. Well, the battle begins. The contestants are into the 16 inch interior play space, ready to battle to their heart's content. Who will you be betting on? The VIP sitting and judging portal menu. Betting on concession fees. Oh man, I know all everything about this project. Just cool. Oh, I like that. Nice and simple. Snap them together using battle grip. What is this battle grip that I I'm just hearing about now. I wish I had money. Right? Right? That gladiator pit is just so cool. Together we can build it. I feel like we need like Bob the Builder to just kind of cruise it for a moment. Six days to go on this one. You know what? I don't think I actually gave it this project here. The Tor Bridge Cull, a town on the edge of adventure. Alex G, it's good to see you. And uh, is it Kettle? Ket Kettle? I want to, I want to, like, I see your, the, the name all the time and I just, I never know how to pronounce it. So I figure I might as well get some clarification on that here now. Um, the roads are fantastic. They are very nice and they're, they're just, they're thin. They're so thin. So it's not going to use up a whole bunch of plastic. Which is it's very nice. That would be actually be a great one to, to add to the TV there as well. The three core sets, the modular sets, the stretch and encounter goals. 72 pieces and sets so far. That is that is a lot. I'm curious to see what the all-in pledge is. Kadil? Kadil. Kadil. I wanna Kadil. Kadil? I've Kendall. Done, Kendall. <laughs> it's just uh, hello, Pete Rutman. I hope you're having yourself a super duper ridiculously awesome and fantastic day. <laughs> you hush, Alex. Uh, lol, 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 lol. It is a good to see you. Uh, I, I very much had an impromptu stream. I didn't expect to be streaming. I was tired and I didn't want to just fall asleep on the couch again. So woke myself up with some coffee. Here we are. I wanted to show off my new hair anyway, which I'm super thrilled about. It's Ken Dahl. Okay, so anyhow, back to this. Uh, so boom, looking at some core sets, what you get with your pledge, the stretch goals, the encounters, and the add-ons. So that right there is absolutely epic. The interplayable buildings. Move between buildings on multiple floors. Okay, I want, yeah, look at that right there. Ah, uh, that is just one of the beautifulest. Beautifulest? Uh, building interiors I think I've seen like just hands down that is probably the most beautiful interior I have seen as of yet I really enjoy that um, I think we'll skip watching this video but oh oh I like that 
The Fog of War room covers. That is genius. This is a this is a really cool little Kickstarter. I love the the artwork that they put on the walls there too. Um Yes, I need that floor in my house now. Right now. Oh, I love the way that they <clears throat> kind of demonstrate what it would look like with the interior lights as well with some some good old LEDs. Ah. Oh. Okay, I got I got to see what this one is. The Last Hearth. I, I can't read that. Get out of the way. Cool. That is a really big building. <laughs> that is a really big building. That is a centerpiece building right there is what that is. <clears throat> yeah, look at that thing. It's magnificent. Okay, so defend the town. Nice, big, beautiful bridge of majesticness. The underarch play area. Fantastic. Fog of War is giving me ideas for my mobile DMing. Awesome. Ideas are always a win. The five story fortress. Yeah, this is. I love everything about this. I wonder what they used as the uh, the background for the uh, the illustration there. I wonder if it's one of the uh, the battle mats. Playable on each level, which is always cool. Um, yeah, that is that's that's fantastic. Make the bridge nice and tall. Make it as long as you want. Just cool. The fighting pits. This is just the gladiator barracks. The beast pens. Oh, they just could do so many cool things. I like. I want this just so that I can do really cool photo shoots with this. I had my wife down and she helped me with some uh, photography for my last video and it was really cool getting to see her in action uh, taking pictures of nerdy things. Uh, she's a, a wedding photographer so to, to see her downstairs in her element and really excited about taking pictures of miniatures was just like it was the coolest thing ever. The fighting pit featurette. Um, super cool. I don't think we'll, we'll play these ones modular sets the battle grip yeah i want to i want to know how they lock together what is this battle grip method what is this yeah this is an absolutely fantastic running kickstarter six days left this is definitely one to jump in if you've got the spare cashiola and uh about probably a month of of print time available because I feel like those building that just to, to finish this set I feel like would be just a solid three weeks minimum maybe I don't know well especially depending on what you're printing it at right I print most of my ooh tavern furniture a bar wall cabinets tables chairs and room partitions Dorms furniture, a setup to furnish the rooms for the last hearth, beds, wardrobe, trunks, washstands, desks, side tables, bunks, wash tub, dresser, standing mirror. Oh, no. Bonus set. Nice. Ooh, that would actually be some great uh, scatter terrain there. You can make yourself a little Stonehenge. Broken bridge. Excellent addition. And an outhouse. <laughs> As I've learned from um, Fearsome Wilderness's Kickstarter, is that every game needs an outhouse because everybody poops. Everybody poops. The Battle Grip Locking System. Um, it'd be very much so. Uh, I didn't see how it worked, and I didn't see a, really an illustration for it, but that's okay. Uh, what is this? What, what are we looking at here? So, okay, the silver tier. Um, the inn's keep cottage, the coach house, the kitchens, the ruined tour. Ooh, actually, that's fantastic. That'd be good for some, uh, some Warhammer battles. The Grumble's townhouse, the Malat's townhouse, the twins' house, and then there's a gold tier, the fish guts. Ooh, so this is, uh, this is getting more into the, uh, the murky waterness of it. The outcast dive tavern. I gotta know what the gold tier is worth. The ramshackle fencing. Ah, oh, more scatter terrain. Market day. Oh. Okay, that is that is just a metric boatload of stuff available. Uh, that link has a video on it. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out here. So, what do we got here? 
This is all of the unlockables, which it looks like they have done pretty good for themselves. So some more concept art. Oh, the, I'm guessing there's a voting system to uh, to do the encounter sets, which is pretty cool. Uh, they, do they have a little bit of lore and stuff like that too? Cool. Some more concept art. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, so let's... Field and Fallen. Yeah, this is... I, I, I like this. I like this a lot. Okay, and then add-ons. So let's, let's see if I can find that lock system, because I am a little bit curious about how that works. I feel like I skipped past it. Is it this one here? Uh, it might be. The Fighting Pits featurette, maybe? Um, do -do 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 one way or another, I just I want to see a flash of this because this is. These are also a... removable, so if you don't want them, you can play without them. Uh, oh. And uh, yeah, there's these neat things like uh, the sort of um, these cowards nooks that we've created. So in the game that we envisioned, uh, someone who retreats to these spaces can't be attacked. But of course. Oh, there's this there. just so and cool. I, I really like this. All right. On the other side. All in all. So cool, 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 cool. So the fighting pits only. Uh, $30 Canadian, the Great Torbridge, uh, $80, uh, bronze tier, okay, silver tier, and the gold tier, $170, but you get yourself a lot of stuff, which is pretty darn cool. I wish I had money. All right, so that was a really cool Kickstarter. And once again, let's just flash back up to the top and display uh, six days to go for that one there. So pretty darn cool. Okay, so coming up next, we've got the Baby Beast Collection. This one is from uh, Mia for uh, from M3DM. Uh, Mia's just fantastic. Her work is just getting exponentially better all the time. Uh, and, and this right here is just filled with ridiculously cuteness. Uh, what are your printers again? Uh, I'm rocking the, uh, the CR10, Creality CR10, and the Anycubic Photon S, which is currently down for the count because my screen just died, which is most unfortunate. Uh, so this is her, uh, her sixth Kickstarter, and... Um, it's just uh, 21 baby beasts so far, and they are all filled with really, really, really ridiculously cuteness. Um, boo -boo -boo. If you take a look at the battle grip, it's about 130 in. Uh, yeah, I'll have to take a look at, back at that uh, later on. I closed that tab. That's my bad. Uh, a baby yeti. That would be pretty cool. The full model list. You're looking at an owl club, a displacer kitten, a sporling, a hippogriff, an eye baby, a dragon turtle, a terrasca, terras, terrasac. I, I can never remember how to say that. The phoenix, the cerberus, uh, the hydra, the periton, the cockatrice, the manticore, the unicorn, the wyvern, the dire bear, the pegasus, the griffin, the tree, and the kelpie, the yeti. The yep, yeti's on the list. It's right there. Okay, let's see these adorableness. Oh, three months and 85 pounds. I love the fact that there's there's a pounds on there. That, that, that Oh, the displacer kitten. He's only five pounds. Oh, I just want to hug him and, and let his tail give me the, the death hug back. And just, just too much cuteness oozes out of all of this. Absolutely oozes out. The eye baby. Ooh. Oh, no, sorry. This is the eye baby. 125 pounds. That's a hefty eye, baby. Um, okay. Oh, look at them. Oh, the cuteness. Yeah, these, these guys are all pretty darn adorable. I would instantly try and tame these guys. Oh. So, um, up to the dire wolf. Okay, no, that's not true because we have been up to here. So there is still the potential for the rock golem, the tresium, the elephant, and the dragon. I should not re read names because I'm just not good at reading them. Um, 
Doom. And then there's the Adult Beast Bundle, which is uh, 15 Adult Beasts, which is pretty cool. Six of them pair with the babies. Oh, they have a mommy or a daddy. Uh, I would die if I birthed something 125 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we are built for that. Um, the Familiars and Beasts Collections. 25 animals, all super fantastic. I love uh, M3DM's work, though. Uh, Halloween pack. So these are all add-ons there. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't checked out Mia and and her her channel, she's got a YouTube channel. Uh, she also does, like, uh, um, ZBrush uh, live streams to kind of show you kind of what to do and, and how to do it. And just all around is a, is a fantastic person. So... Definitely go and check out the baby beasts and all of their cuteness with 65 hours to go. So if that's something you want to do and you want to check this one out, you're running out of time. Okay, so last but not least on here, we've got the, the Pit Fighter. Uh, this one has five days to go. And we are just about at 100,000. So let's check out their video. Boop -da -boom. By the way, thank you all for coming and hanging out with my very much impromptu... Gods uh, have chosen their boom. champions to battle okay, to the death. Loud. Luckily, they can resurrect them to so, fight and die. A little bit of a Colosseum battle going on here. In this fast-paced, hard-hitting fighting game, reading your opponent is as important cool. as rolling your dice. That's a nice little, uh, Use different attacks and abilities. Little Cut character your cards and all of that stuff. Very orcish. Into a wall Very of much spikes. so. Pit Fighter features easy rules with gorgeous miniatures suitable for any tabletop skirmish, RPG, or war game. Each battle takes only one to five minutes, perfect for a group of friends minutes. with That's some downtime on game night or when someone has to pause to take a call. Become a mind reader, smash your opponents over and over. If you are lucky enough with the dice, you can get critical hits or even one shot on someone. You can also play in teams. So this one is three modular put fighting by the, uh, pits optimized for both resin and FDM printing. Resin and FDM. The city, with three different easily swappable That's environmental cool, hazards cool and braziers that take LED lights to take your board to the next level. The floating island, where being forced back means a fall to your death. The ice pit where something evil lays in the waters to drag your champion to an icy doom. The miniatures have been designed oh, in a unique style doom. by some That's of the most I talented I always want an icy in doom. the industry. Alternate weapons are unlockable as stretch goals. Nice. All models are designed with home printing in mind and come pre-supported by the best support guy in the business. Cool, cool, cool. Keep it cool. So this is put together by Greg, the 3D printing pro. So if you're uh, if you're looking at uh, at getting yourself situated with uh, resin printing and uh, and supporting, uh, his channel is definitely a good place to go and check out. Uh, so I love the fact that it's not just models. It's it's a full little mini game that you can just you know it's set up quickly, roll some dice, have some little encounters, and uh, I I think that is a fantastic. Uh, Little deal there. Uh, he's got a mini 4K bundle tier for a huge savings, uh, so that's definitely something worth checking out. I don't think it's I don't think it's worldwide, but I could be wrong on that. Um. All right. So how do how does this work? We've got the champion name, the starting health, the, the card art, the damage. So die six plus one. Defense 14, attack bonus plus 4, special ability. The first time she damages an opponent, place a bleed token on the opponent's card. On the following turn and each turn thereafter, minus 3 for health from the opponent. Cool. So it is a, a free test model right there. So yeah, just the fact that you've got yourself some some beautiful minis, some cool little battle arenas, and uh, and the fact that it's a quick little game that you could play. Like you said, you know what, if, if you're in the middle of a D&D &D campaign or Warhammer or... Whatever tabletop game you may be playing, uh, you know, if somebody walks away, you could always set one of these up real quick and, and have a quick little little session, which is pretty cool. Uh, looks like he's pretty much crushed the greater portion of all of these. Actually, I, I should have crushed all of these. The Elf Warlock, the Dwarf Cleric, gets a hammer and a new holy symbol. The Minotaur gets maces and clavers. 
Boop -a -boo. I think it's a good price on the all-in on this one as well. Pit Fighter all-in is $40 Canadian, so that gets you access to everything. Some beautiful models, as per usual. Uh, James did a fantastic job on that. Oh my goodness, look at the base and everything. Oh, I wish I could paint like that. Um, I'm an alright painter. I am not a phenomenal painter on any level. Oh, I really, 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 really like the Vampire Lord. That is a beautiful model. Up to two likes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. That makes me very happy. Especially because I didn't think anybody was going to join me for this rather just spur of the moment. Oh, look at this guy. Chris Spots. Oh, we see that name again. Cool. Well, Chris Spots is doing an excellent job painting miniatures. Oh, look at this guy. He's just so short and stout. And that is a beautiful display for a miniature. I really, really like that. So, yeah. Cool little game. Uh, some sweet some sweet models. Kind of got, like, Street Fighter vibe going on with this one here. Oh, uh, what? There's even a back tattoo? Oh, that's cool. Somebody did a great job with that. They have... Oh, my... Uh, yep, that is... That's, I think, hands down the coolest model I've seen tonight. Just, you gotta get yourself some Ninja Turtle love in there. Peer pressure gets you up to four likes. Nice. Okay, yeah. Super cool. Warforged Fighter. Nice. I'm just making a Warforged character as of right now. Uh, Artificer? Artificer? Artifs? Artificer? I have no idea how to say it. But I'm really excited to uh, to get that character up and rolling for this campaign that we've got coming up there. Oh, that is a fantastic Goliath right there. Oh, and the little goblin warlock. Uh, the paint is amazing. Yeah, there's some seriously talented painters out there. Good old bugbear. So, yeah, you know what? 40 bucks gets you some pretty sweet miniatures. Once again, all pre-supported. Pre-supported models for the... For the win just always uh that is not warforged that is shredder that is straight up shredder right ninja turtle and shredder oh yeah so the city arena i just i love the the little background uh battlements going on there pretty fantastic once again fantastic job painting by whoever had done so oh if this is set up for LEDs, you could totally print this in resin, do an ink wash on it, and then place that on top. And, ah, oh, that's, yeah, I like that. Master Shredder on roids! Master Shredder. Kind of want to go and watch some Ninja Turtles now. So I wonder what this is. Is this just a, like, the player token? Or is that, I, I'm not, not entirely sure. So what is the game? Uh, you know what? Let's let's check this out. You start off by choosing from some of the gorgeous minis champion that you would like. So we're going to pick the Dwarf Lord because he is totally cool. We're going to find the corresponding totally cool. champion stat card, which has all his relevant statistics on it. Sweet. Then I, your yeah, I did see some, uh, would some choose, or could be it. doing at the same time. Again, choosing from these gorgeous minis. And we're going to choose the Vampire Lord. Oh, He's Vampire really Lord's nasty. So cool. And then you're going to grab the corresponding... Stat card form. That is a absolutely massive stat. <laughs> little stat card. And I don't think it needs to be you that You might as well put them in the starting position, which is oh, just basically anywhere point, in the middle of the that arena. Makes sense. And then you can put your Dwarf Lord I'm guessing these in the starting tokens position here in the middle of the arena. Status effects, like bleed the environmental that. hazards, the spikes and the meat grinder there, they come out. You can just put them in however you want. They fit right in. Uh, nice. You see, I'll just I adjust like it. it and make it look the way I want it to look. And then... Let, from there, let's look at the battle planner. So that's the health dice, and it goes in the health slot. You turn that to match the starting health on the top right Makes corner sense. of your champion's card, yeah, so totally 14. 14. The special action token, on a turn, if you're going to use a one-time special action, special action you turn token. it over to the fist and the lightning bolt, otherwise you leave it off. The dice next to it is to choose your attack. There are six possible attacks, so you have a six-sided dice. And the top lifts off so you can reveal your action to your opponent. Your opponent can reveal their actions to you at the appropriate time. You have condition markers, which go in the condition marker slot. Buffs or debuffs if you happen to get one. You need this two six-sided dice well usually. And also a 20-sided die. Ooh, roll a two. We don't like that. So let's get rid of that. That, 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 that dice needs a dice jail. 
Dice trails. So that's all you need to get See, started. Now, more looking dice at trails. it from behind your screen, more again, dice trails. you have... There are six possible attack actions, which are out of the rule book here. They're very easy to learn, but until you learn, you keep the sheet handy. And your opponent would also choose from those six. Once you reveal, you'd be rolling a 20-sided die to see if your attack hits. Now, to make it easier, we've included a interaction chart for each of the attacks, how they fare and interact with other attacks that your opponent might choose. So until you learn them, which won't take long, you just use this little chart to calculate your bonuses, or penalties when you're rolling to hit and for damage. Really easy. So once you roll to hit and you add your attack bonus on from your card and from the chart and the other attack bonuses you might have, if you hit, his damage is D6 plus two, so it'd be three plus two, which is five, plus any modifiers from the actions you've chosen. Now, let's say I took six damage. I go from 14, I would just turn my 20 side dice to eight and leave it face up so my opponent sees what health I have left. My special action token, is on the card. If it's on, you get to use it. Once you use it, if it's a one-time use, you just flip the token to off for the rest of the game. If it's a Fair passive enough. ability that's always on, you can just leave it always on. The condition indicator slot, if you happen to get a buff or debuff, you just... Cool. So that's a, that's a pretty good little rundown there. I like it. I dig it. Once again, I don't want to play actual videos for too long just because I don't know if there's any repercussions for doing that. I don't, that's why I add a little bit of a voiceover while they're playing, just because I, I don't want any strikes on my channel for playing other people's content on it. I, I'm not quite sure what those rules are. So that's the reason that I'm not finishing that, is because it's just a slight fear. A special $1 million ultimate stretch goal. That is absolutely insane. Free gifts by Hexton Hills. <coughs> Who doesn't like free stuff? These gifts are excluded from the merchant tier license, except for the Hexton Hills tiles. Cool, nice. Uh, oh, look at them! That's cool. They're little miniatures of of the uh, battle arenas. I like that. And then a free gift from the Lost Adventures Two Kickstarter. Sweet. Um, from Artisans Guild. Oh, that is a fantastic model of which I'm probably gonna have to go and claim. Uh, basic aid, some sweet, uh, some sweet, uh, those things that you put models on bases. Some very cool bases right there. I like that. And wait, what's this from Titan, Titan Graft? <clears throat> gear it how you, <clears throat> gear it how you want, pose it how you want, basically totally customized and printed at home. And as a free gift, uh, to Pit Fighter backers, an exclusive epic demon boss you can only get access to right here for the next six months. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, free gift gift from uh, man. He really has just uh, just nailed these free gifts there. That is that's fantastic. There's a lot of looks like there's a lot of awesome uh, artists on board with this, which is pretty cool. Circus uh, grotesque. That was a great section. I printed this guy and I love him because I'm a jester and that's a jester and jesters for the win. Uh, cool. So anyhow, he kind of just promotes a bunch of the other uh the other artists and stuff from that so uh yeah uh super cool so the all-in pledge uh can be forty dollars or you could do forty dollars and get a uh, a code for a discount on uh on the 4k bundle which is pretty cool so once again let's just float back to the top on that one five days to go just shy of a hundred thousand that's pretty darn cool so Awesome, 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 awesome. That was a lot of fun. I managed to wake up and have the energy for this, which made me uh, made me very happy. Uh, I, I thank you guys immensely for, for coming and joining me and, and hanging out and being very active in the chat. That makes me just oh so happy. It makes me, makes me very happy. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoy doing these little uh, these little Kickstarter showcases. Uh, I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, especially when people are just engaging in the uh, in the chat like that. Uh, so yeah, I think like once a month is, is kind of what I want to try and do for these. Uh, <clears throat> I've, I've pondered the idea of of doing these at the beginning of every month and kind of trying to showcase uh, patreons and their their new their new work that they are working on there, which is pretty cool. Is that a little high five emote? Or is he waving? Or is he flipping the bird? I can't tell. It's so tiny, but it's a cute emoticon anyway. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice here. 
Uh, was good to see what uh, sparked interest to uh, to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, sorry. My throat is just uh, rather dry here. Helps when designing a Kickstarter. Uh, cool. Uh, Pete uh, Pete Rutman, what do you what do you work on there? Uh, are you a designer? Do you do you do Kickstarters? Pete Rutman. That name sounds familiar. Uh, you got this. You got this now. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the things that that spark my interest. Uh, and yeah, I will, like I said, continue to do these a little bit more regularly. I kind of got sidetracked with uh, with projects and all of that other stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's everybody doing? Thanks for coming and hanging out. You guys are all amazing and fantastic and awesome. And I hope you're just going to have an absolutely fantastic rest of your evening or night or whatever it may be for a time of day because everybody lives all over the world from what I've seen. Uh, yeah, we chatted briefly about my Wild West project. Yes, yes, that's that's true. Actually, I was waiting for you to, uh, to get back to me. You are... Let me just check here. Moji bake minis? Bump it bump bump bow bow bow. Sorry, I'm no longer looking at the camera. I'm just trying to see what's going on over on this side. That was fun. This was this was really fun. Tabletop accessories with a Wild West. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, totally. How did that go? Did you did you launch that? Is that is that still a thing? Let's see if I can find that. Um, where were we talking through? Was that through Facebook? I want to say. Um. See if I can get a link for it, because I don't know if links are turned on in uh, in the chat here. Might be able to bring that up and take a gander at her. A uh, little trouble getting funded, but it still has some time running now. Ah, here we go. All right, we will do one more. Bam. Let's fire up the Wild West Hall oh, Nation. Deputy, you still playing with them gadgets and gizmos? You must be hearing all that commotion. Them Hensley boys back so at it. About there. They got every man in fire. Awesome. Shane Glad I could at least uh, at least get the this up here. Right now. Yeah. Oh, come on, Sheriff. You know I've been preparing for this sort of situation. It's just a matter of time before some darn fools came to shoot up the town. So you got everything then? Part near, Sheriff. What do you want to see first? Those are some pretty well, sweet little guns. I see you got all manner of things. But how are we going to carry all this stuff, even if it works? The Henley boys got eight bad dudes to carry their gear. We only got two. <laughs> Sheriff, I got you more than covered. This here's the Westerner's stash. We've got the Westerner's oh, gear stash. Right into oh, it dash. so it doesn't get away from you like a slippery catfish. Ooh. You can store your shakers, your clip, Some and nice your coin clips. Nice. 
some bennies or tokens. You can slide in ammo of all sorts. I, I love that little ammo clip. I think that's to. just fantastic. There's even a spot for your poker card. Oh, yeah. So you have, it's as easy as cooking up your ammo. I'm the deputy. Okay, okay. Settle down there, deputy. Show <laughs> me that there six gun. Sure thing, Sheriff. See, you can grab one of these yeah, that right here pretty cool. and lock it right into your dash. Open lock for the win. By swinging out this here gate, you can load and unload your ammo from the revolver and lickety split. Lickety split. Hey. What if old Doc Pete decides to join us? Maybe he needs something in his medicine bag. Oh, Billy Joe Hensley has it out for the Doc. You know, since he done sewed up his lip all wonky, uh, Doc Pete could use the Derringer. All right, so we get the, uh, the ammo trackers are not a bad idea at all, right? All right, so... Once again, I'm not gonna not gonna play the whole thing, but uh, we get the general idea on that. So we've got 18 days to go on this one. Uh, they're looking to get 1,316. They're sitting at 908. They still got themselves time to rock and roll with that. There we go. That's the picture that I, that I recognize there. Uh, so yeah, pretty much Wild West themed tabletop RPG accessories. Uh, so pretty much for for a bunch of different games there. If you if you're going to be rocking and rolling with something like that, you know what? Print off the uh, the little gun with your ammo and uh, and be able to to kind of track the the different different ammunitions and stuff like that. I, I think that's fantastic. The guns are beautifully designed, and same with the ammo and the the ammo holder is is fantastic. Uh, very much enjoy the uh, the looks of that. So the six shooter Benny was cast to look like the butt end of a fully loaded six gun. I think this thing's sweet. The uh, the coin with the uh, the bullet hole in it. Very nice. Very very nice. The classic uh, Aztec coin, Benny. Beautiful. So you can keep track of all your ammunition and your coin productivity. Oh, what do we got? Want to test out one of our files with your printer? Here's the link to a free copy of the bullet ammunition tray. Perfect. Yeah, that thing is slick. It looks real nice and crisp. I like, uh, where is it? I like this one. Uh, she's a she's a beauty for the shotgun ammunition tracker. We've got ourselves the, uh, the rifle with the silk gold. Anything printed in silk gold is just beautiful. Some pre-printed goods if you want to go for it that way, which is always a win for those people that don't have themselves a 3D printer. But I mean, like, I, th I think everybody should just get a 3D printer because that's just the way of the future. Uh, still looking towards uh, getting their stretch goals for the bow and arrow tracker because this thing is just so cool. I, I thoroughly enjoy this piece right here. That is that's just adorable. Adorable? Yeah, can you say that about weapons and ammunition? I think you can. Oh, look at that. That's cool. I like the uh, the weather and, and worn look on it there. The vintage ammunition box replica. Uh, the spittoon spent rounds container dice tower, <laughs> which is just a fantastic idea. That's that's classic. All right, let's. I, I want to check this out. Okay, so you can have it as a, as just the spittoon, or you can do the swap and turn that into a dice tower, which is it's a pretty fantastic dice tower. All right, super cool. Well, uh, well, Pete, I, I definitely hope that you're uh, you're able to crush the uh, the rest of your goals there. Those silly people without printers, right? The bullet hole coin. The bullet hole coin is pretty darn cool. It is pretty darn cool. And we've got old Doc Pete. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So once again, let's just flash back up there. 
18 days to go, sitting at 908, very close to their their stretch uh, the, the initial pledge goal. So super cool. Wild West hardware for your 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 tabletop Wild Western gaming needs. All right. Boom, slip it a boo. Hey, yeah, no, totally. Totally. Sorry I did not have time to uh, to do a, uh, a print and episode on it and all of that jazz. I've uh, <laughs> been pretty swamped with this channel. It's actually, it's, uh, it's a pretty pretty cool feeling to to be drowning in things to do. <laughs> so, sorry I wasn't able to help you out with it previously, but uh, yeah, no, I, I wish it the best of luck. I hope it goes really smoothly. And um, yeah, no, I just, once again, I thank you all for being here. It was pretty darn cool. I uh, need to put a little click plate on the back of the Dice Tower ramp that uh, when it hit uh, by a die makes a sound like it's... Oh, that's actually a really fantastic idea. Good old spittoons. I cannot imagine having a spittoon in my house. I would just be the weirdest, grossest thing ever. If you ever knocked that thing over... Uh, yeah, just the, just the resin printer, just for now. Um... I'm going to have to hold off on getting a, a new screen for probably, like, at least a month, which is super-duper unfortunate. But I still have my FDM, which is a win. That's the joy of having two printers. <laughs> I want more. I want so many more. Um, so, cool. Um, super-duper, ridiculously, awesomely, thanks for, for everybody, once again, for coming out. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time. Until the next time, eh, bye-bye now. And that awkward bye-bye, because I haven't hit the bye yet. I just noticed there was one more thing here. Yeah, if we let him have too much time, he uh, will go off and dye his hair. He'll just start growing bangs. I am so happy with my blue hair. I am ridiculously. This is this has been a life goal of mine for a very long time. The I did not look good at the, at the blonde stage of this. It was bad. It was it was really bad. I'm glad that was only like a 20 minute thing, and then it was it was done and, and gone and I never have to look at the uh, at the at the blonde again so very cool so yeah um super cool this was fun you guys all have yourselves a super duper ridiculously awesome and fantastic night and until the next time goodbye it is a nice color we'll end on that it is a nice color I really like it <laughs>